Coming up next, an interview with a legendary singer whose signature song has empowered so many over the years, but especially one of the biggest all-time superstars of them all, who credits this song as the direct inspiration to everything he's ever written. He actually said that. I actually interview the singer and the legendary Brill Building songwriting couple behind this song, and I dare say uh, their stories haven't been told together on video ever. It's historic. It's also my own personal favorite video that we've ever done. Check it out next. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember every concert you've ever attended and you've made lists commemorating it, you're gonna dig this channel. Make sure to subscribe below right now. Uh, click the bell so you never miss out on our, our interviews, the stories behind the song straight from the artists. And uh, check us out on Patreon to support us, help this channel keep going. I'm excited to bring you another episode from our series, Revelations. This is where featured artists go deep on their greatest songs and albums. Insight you won't find anywhere else. This one's all time. It's my own personal GOAT video. It's an interview with three Rock and Roll Hall of Famers on a song that's been inducted into various Hall of Fames. That's why they have a Hall of Fame. It's an all-time oldie standard that will be listened to thousands of years from now. I'm talking about We Gotta Get Out of This Place by The Animals. Yeah, yeah. We gotta get out of this place. Today I interview the powerhouse vocalist and interpreter of the definitive version of this song, Eric Burden from The Animals, and the Brill Building co-writing couple behind it, Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil, legends. Barry Mann had actually recorded it, thinking it would be his first hit as a solo artist. Wanting a singing career for himself. Actually, he'd already had a hit with the novelty song, Who Put the Bump in the Bump Bump Bump. But he was looking to break out with a song that he knew would be a hit to really rev it up. Only the animals beat him to the punch. And it kind of stopped his momentum or the momentum of the song uh, by cutting it themselves. And they changed the lyrics. Now, in a far-ranging interview coming up, uh, both sides share their side of the story. It's really cool. Including when Eric Burden bumped into them at the doctor's office and got a talking to and uh, Eric Burden's thoughts on another legend saying that this song has inspired everything that he's ever done. This is one of my favorite videos ever. It actually is. It's worth watching. Now, as we go into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, my favorite frames ever as well. And make sure to take advantage of the phenomenal deals that Zenny always runs to design your own pair of frames, the color, the shape, the size, the style. You can go to zenny.com. Actually, click on the link below or download the new app. It's really cool to use and it'll show you all the deals that Zanny always has going. Now my girl, you're so young and pretty. We're at that moment where I get to ask a question that I've been waiting to ask my whole life. We gotta get out of this place. And one of my favorite, probably in my top 10 favorite songs of all time. It came about, I just was came writing- about because just writing. we were writing a song for the Righteous Brothers and um, and, you know, I think you came up with the melodic idea. Yeah, the, the thing yeah. that came up first was, it was, it was, it was, it was that riff, you know, because I remember there were songs that had kind of riffs like that that were great. And I said, I want to do a nice bluesy riff that I could write to, at least melodically. We cut a demo for the Righteous Brothers uh -huh. and Barry sang, I sang it. and did, you know, 1500 voices and backgrounds and it harmonies, was a great, and it great was a demo. great demo, and George Goldner wanted to put it out on Redbird Red Bird Records. I was, I was an artist on Redbird. It was Lee Bird Stoller's label. label. Right. And um, we had gone to see Alan Klein, who there's a book out about him. We played the demo for him just because that we were kids who played our demos for everybody. No, and I... We left it there, and we forgot. And when Barry's record was about to come out, Kirshner called us and said, you know, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that you have a number two record on the UK charts. So yep. We got to get out of this place. This is written by uh, Man and Wheel who wrote, uh, you've lost that loving feeling. And we hope with your help it's made number two in the charts. It's called, uh, we got to get out of this place. <laughs> okay. 
the bad news is Barry's record can't come out because mm. they're putting it out yeah, in the yeah. States. On top of that, they also changed the lyric. They did. Yeah. You know, they, and we thought we had a pretty good lyric, but they were, I mean, they were right. They weren't right not to call us and say, look, they're going to change it. Can you, or can, can, you, can, can you do, do this it. with us? Right. Or yes. can you, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm never adverse to changing something and making it better or making yeah. it work for the artists that's right. singing it. I was sitting in, uh, in, in the Beverly Hills doctor's office one day. There was this lady sitting next to me and I, I, I think she was uh, pregnant, you know, and she was, she was in the office to get checked up. You know. She uh, turned around to me and she said, uh, you know, Eric Burden, aren't you? And I said, yeah. She said, you know, my husband and I, we hated what you did with our song. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, I'm, t- I'm terribly sorry. And she got up and she walked towards the, because they called her into the office. And she waddled across the office and she turned around and she said, but we got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll bet you did. <laughs> so, Cynthia Weil, right? Yeah, it's Cynthia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They ended up changing it for a guy who's from a coal mining town. And uh, I mean, they did what they did. And I really think in a way it helped. It helped for that. You know, it helped the song. Because it really was very real. For well, you wrote group. a song that, without even knowing it, tapped into Eric Burden because he was able to take that record and do one better than Mick Jagger. Mm-hmm. And yes. with the way that he sang that, from the dirty old pot, you know. Yes. When I heard that record as a kid growing up in a small town saying, I want to get out of here, I want to go yeah. do something. Yes. That record spoke to me like, you know, well, got to get out of this place. I got to go make something happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the original lyric was uh, in this dirty pot part of the city. Where the sun forgets to shine. People say they just ain't no use in trying. Ain't no use in trying. Watch, watch my daddy live and die here. Just a broken, beaten man. Yeah. He says, son, just get out when you can. Yes, you can. Yeah. Watch my daddy live and die here. I think they're both. Um, yeah, they're both I love lyrics. both lyrics. Yeah, you know, I, I and do too. I think they both speak to that, that moment. How are you able to tap in? to that lyrically you know because you really speak of the working class kind of that brooding blue collar um being trapped i don't know how i was able to tap into it because it certainly wasn't my story yeah. you know no, i wasn't. grew up privileged on the west side of manhattan i don't know i guess a universal yearning that i tapped into i, I think it's also a bit of your own yearning to get to get out of this place not, not necessarily to get out of a, a, a region maybe get out of your family I mean, I think it may relate to that. I mean, the, the idea that you were really felt that you were a Martian yeah. and everybody else was not. Yeah. And I think that could have been where you tapped it in from. Maybe. Because it's not, that, that's another feeling that people have when they hear the song. Yeah. It wasn't only that, it was all, yeah, it was about getting out of being trapped in a, yes. in a place that is foreign to yeah, you. No one understood you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm writing at the moment about, about my uh, youth in my own town. And it, It was pretty bad environment, to say the least. I mean, it was, you know. But as a kid, you don't care. You don't see it as a kid. You go back and visit it, and you'll see it and feel it, you know. First time I heard that song, because that was the first animal song I ever heard, Mm. I always say that first time I heard rock and roll, I felt like I was busting out of prison. I mean, literally, it felt like my mind was being freed. That's how I, and I only feel that with certain songs, Born to Run, Springsteen. I felt that with We Gotta Get Out of This Place when I heard the dun 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 dun, dun you know, the, the bass part. Yeah, that's a and great then you rap. come in with the, the dirty old part of the... I mean, it spoke to me in a way that it made sense. Mm. It was like the pop music that you would hear in the 80s when I was growing up, the top 40 stuff. It was dance stuff, and there was good stuff on there. But this was a song that went deep. It wasn't a surface song. No. It, it, it made sense to me. I watched my dad working so hard, you know, he was a painting contractor, working all hours of the day, six, sometimes seven days a week, and mm. thinking, mm. I don't want to do that. I respect my dad, I love my dad, but I got to bust out of this small town, and I want to do something. And that song, like, unlocked that for me. Yeah, the song and the changes in it, and what inspired me to record it, and hope that it would get the message across the working class ethic across in a way. 
It's that it was it always reminded me of my grandfather, who uh, was artillery in World War One, totally deafened because of the war, and then he was a miner working in pits mm -hmm. in five foot seams, which meant the water would be up to your waist almost, you know. And then my father, who was it was a different set of sad rules in in his life because he was a lifelong uh, asthmatic, uh, but it didn't make any difference what condition he was in. If if he had to go to work, he he would go to work. And I'd see, I saw him in, in such bad condition, uh, I, I saw him walk, going downstairs from where we lived, down, going downstairs backwards. He couldn't wow. go downstairs normally, front way. He was totally out of breath, totally strangled by asthma. And I inherited it from him, you know, as luck would have it. Uh, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really conscious of what I was doing, changing lyrics and everything. It just, it just came out that way. He probably already knew that, but that study uh, about uh, Vietnam veterans and the song that most resonated with them was We Gotta Get Out of This Place. Yeah. That meant true. so much to them. And all the way up until uh, recently in Iraq, the um, British uh, guys were, were reported that they were singing, singing that song. We were performing, we had a show in 2004 off Broadway where, you know, I sang the hit, Cynthia set them up, and we had background groups. And in the audience one time was a, a nurse who was, who, who had spent time in Vietnam. And she wrote to us, and she wrote that every year there is a, a, a get-together, a reunion. A reunion. Mm -hmm. And they all get together and they sing, we got to get out of this place. And it's just, it was such, I had tears in my eyes. It was such a touching letter. Yeah, absolutely. So great. I mean, that's when you feel that songwriting is a noble. I mean, compared writing. to a doctor, you feel I'm doing something silly, but yes. then when something like that happens, you know, it's no question. So That's much. why I always felt about sociological songs. We weren't doing anything silly. You know, yes. I felt we no, were doing, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. Because um, music is, especially today, is the only universal language. I mean, mm. you, you put true. Democrats and, and Republicans and whoever, you know, different people that believe in different things all together, and they can disagree like crazy. But you put on a song like this song, We Gotta Get Out of This Place, Don't Stop Believing, Piano Man. Mm -hmm. They all are singing the same song together. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you came from, whatever. Mm -hmm. I also got to bring up South by Southwest when Bruce Springsteen mm -hmm. gave oh, that, that speech. So I only watch that a couple of times a year because mm -hmm. it brings a tear to my every time he plays yeah. that song and then says, that's every song I ever wrote. Then for me, it was the animals. For, for some, they were just another one of the really good beat groups that came out of the 60s. But to me, the animals were, they were a revelation. Uh, they were the first records with full-blown class consciousness that I'd ever heard. Uh, we Gotta Get Out of This Place. Uh, it had that great bass riff, you know, it had that, that uh, And that was just the clock, man, the clock marking time, you know. In this dirty old part of the city where the sun refused to shine. I thought oh, that was fantastic. Um, who was it? I think it was Steve Van Zandt told us to tune into that. Oh, yeah. And it was it was so thrilling because yeah. I'm such a Springsteen yeah, fan. Yeah, we just love I, him. Yeah. I feel he's, he's incredible. I love his lyrics. I yeah, love a, everything about him. You hear it all over his albums, Darkness on the Edge of Town, Born in the USA. All mm -hmm. those songs are about being trapped, and being, yeah. trying to, to get out of there and, and do something, follow that dream. We gotta get out of this place. Girl, there's a better life for me and you. Yes, I know it's true. That's every song I've ever written. That's all of them. I'm not kidding either. That's Born to Run, Born in the USA. Everything I've done for the past 40 years, including all the new ones, you know? And if you think about it, it is. That is Springsteen's, no. his songs about the grim 
working class rising above those circumstances that that light at the end of the tunnel new jersey new jersey <laughs> yeah i'm getting much worse than new jersey i i identified with uh with with bruce instantly my favorite uh track of his maybe not over over the passage of time but when it was released and i was on tour and i heard the bass line in in uh, Born in the USA, the bass is so yeah. phenomenal. Boom, you know, oh God. You know, he was the working class dude that made it to the top. And I, I, I love that about his story. And I love the fact that his wife is on the road with him and he doesn't make a big deal out of it. She's, She's just there as a beautiful guitar player, you know. <laughs> and you can tell the, the whole gang and you know, our soul like sucked in into him as a person. They're you know? blood brothers, yeah. And man, he can go on for hours. He's got so much energy. It's amazing. And I love all his road songs, you know, about, you know, the Chuck Berry area of like worrying about, am I going to get busted as I'm driving down the road? Darkness on the Edge of Town, he oh, yeah. talks Great. about how that, specifically that album, because Born to Run was this album that was all about innocence and all those things, but Darkness on the Edge of Town is, as an adult has become one of my favorites because yeah. I understand it better. And he said that that was inspired by listening to the animal songs like, we gotta get out of this place and it's my life and, and the, the circumstances he was seeing. That's how I felt too, it just resonated. Yeah. It resonates yeah. with so many people and it's not the person who wrote the song, but it's the person, you know, it's like Frank Sinatra can do that. He can do a song that a million other people have done, but yeah. the second he sings, it's his yeah. Yeah. because he interprets it yeah. perfectly as if he wrote it. And that's what, what you do so well. It's good. It's good to know that people feel that way. You know, I mean, the great compliments and, um, and great Debt to to Bruce Wall. What did I you mean, think when you saw him do that on South by Southwest? What, what did you think? Uh, well, you know, I was amazed. You know, I mean, I was like, it was a great feeling to to know that uh, somebody of his caliber was uh, giving us credit, giving the animals credit for being a spark in the chain reaction of the atomic bomb, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. known as rock and roll. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, it felt good. What was extra special about it, though, yeah. was years earlier, he asked me to allow him to produce an album. And I said, no. Really? Yeah. Wow. No, I don't know why I said no. Now, I thought he would have held that against me forever. But that's the kind of guy he is. He doesn't. And when he said that about us on stage, I knew that this is really a, an upstanding guy. And we've we've touched ground, you know, I've touched ground here and there. You've, you've jammed together a few times. Yeah. The Stone Pony, the club yes. in New Jersey. We were playing there. This is the first time I knew that Bruce had any interest in this. There was a phone on the wall, you know, dee, 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 <laughs> with a, uh, a metal uh, wire on it. And the manager of the club had the phone stretched to its limit and he was holding it up on the, on the stage as we were playing. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? What's, what's going on here? He goes, <laughs> it's Bruce. He said, he's at home watching the kids and he wanted to hear the band. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. Wow, that's really cool. That just became, it was a natural anthem for, for me at the age of 18, 19, 20. Those songs really kind of ushered in that new role of rock and roll more as a, a vehicle for, um, really for common perception of the force for social consciousness you know yeah. because yeah. rock and roll before that very innocent buddy holly chuck berry elvis press were singing about cars and girls and crews and that kind of thing yeah you guys the beatles the beach boys the birds 
Bob Dylan, you were talking about something, you know, just a little, you took it a step further. Yeah, in a way, it, it became spiritual in a way. We, we realized that the, to the toys were, were cool and that the bay bitch was something to pursue and sing about and, you know, worship at their feet and I love you, baby, and baby, 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 and all of that. But there is a lot more to life than that. And it has to begin, uh, as uh, the boss says, uh, in, the, uh, in the darkness, on the edge of town. You know? <laughs> That's where it begins. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about the animals and we gotta get out of this place. What are your memories of this song? What are your thoughts on Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde, the power couple of the Brill Building? Let's have a great talk in the comments. I just, I love this video so much. It means a lot. Uh, let's have a great discussion. If you like this video, we invite you to be a, a full-time part of our channel. Um, subscribe below. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.